Uh, we're on page nine, I believe. Yeah, the finance, I think we're page nine. Yeah, page nine. But before we go there, I'm just going to talk about what we have done so far. Yeah. So far, we've basically talked about payments, right? How to calculate the payment, how to figure out the interest portion of each payment, the principal portion, all of that we talked about. We spent two days on that. Uh, then we talked about insurance. Did insurance not make it on here? As far as I see, there's no insurance, so we're going to add that. Add a bubble to your front page there. We need to talk about insurance, right? So we talked about insurance. A uh, little tricky at times, but... You know, if you practice, and we will get back to it, I will AC you on basically everything we're learning throughout this week, okay? Not today, but starting tomorrow. So, uh, and, and so we're going to kind of park this a little bit and talk about amortization tables. So well, let's go to page 9. It looks like this. Page nine. And uh, if you remember in vehicle finance, we, we talked about these tables. It's basically the same thing again. Okay, there's nothing, nothing uh, really new there. But uh, you, I always find that students need a reminder as to how to work these, okay? So, I'll tell you this, let's go straight to that table before we actually go into that example. On page nine, you should see one of these. Um, anytime you take out a loan, you should be able to ask, I, I just go online and I just see the thing online, okay, with your bank. Um, so let's say you take a five-year loan and you make monthly payments, right? So five times 12, you should have 60, 60, pay, uh, 60 lines like this for every single payment you make. It'll be have a breakdown like this for you. We're just gonna focus primarily on the first three or four months. Like we're not gonna go past that because it's very, very time consuming. But you still need to understand how these work. How, how do they make them? Obviously they use Excel spreadsheets, right? They're not actually doing this by hand but it still is good to go through the process for you to know how this is done. So how many payments would you have over 25 years? Like 25 years times 12, there's 300 of these payments that you're gonna be making over the lifetime of your mortgage. So there's technically 300 lines like this. And every month, the interest and the principal portion of your payment will change just slightly, not by much, okay? But the interest goes down and the principal portion goes up over time. So let's actually fill one of these in here. So mortgage schedules, just notice the name mortgage schedules is the same thing as amortization tables. They mean the exact same thing. It tracks a monthly payment over a period of time. Uh, example one, fill in the monthly payment chart for a house valued at 185. So there's that value of the house. I would strongly encourage you to have a calculator and follow along on this one. And there's a 25,000 down payment made. Interest rate is 6% and it's amortized over 25 years, meaning it's spread out over 25 years. You're going to take that long to pay it off. Whenever you make one of these charts, you need to start with a payment, the monthly payment. The payment is the price minus any down payment times a table rate divided by a thousand. Okay. 
And this is what we call the mortgage. Mortgage. Mortgage is a loan towards a house or a real estate property, okay? So payment in this case would be 185,000 minus the 25,000 down payment made. Hey, come on in. You want the... Um, and then you go uh, minus 25 and then we're gonna go divide it by a thousand and go get that table rate get me that table rate all right go find it this should this is a one mark right there boom just getting that table rate you get one mark so I'm gonna find it here on my own And what would it be? 640, right? Yep, 640 per thousand dollars of loan. And you might think it's ridiculously low, but this is over 25 years, right? So they're charging you 640 for every thousand dollars you borrow. I want you to do this, the subtraction here, always write down that number underneath right away, because that is essentially your mortgage. Okay, and now we find our payment. 160,000 times 640, right, divided by 1,000, that's 1,024. There are no cents there, right, so this is the payment. Um, I think I just want to say this in case you missed it when we had the online lesson where did they get that 640 from i matched six percent right on this table with 25 years and that gave me that 640 right there okay so 1040 you take this payment and you you plug it into the payment column so i'm going to scroll down a bit so every single one of these Every month, you're going to make the same payment. It's not going to change. If you want full marks on these, make sure you have dollar signs on every single cell, right? Uh, zero. Do you mind closing the blinds there for you, like just yours? I think that's going to help a little bit. There we go. Perfect. Thank you. All right, so now, now this is when, once you find the payment, this is where it gets tricky, okay? We need to find, start with an unpaid balance. Like there's an amount you owe, and the amount you owe is 160000 Okay? Anybody remember that weird word equity? Equity is something that you don't really deal with on a regular basis, so it's kind of hard to understand. Anybody remember what equity stands for? Your own words? How much money you would get back? Yes. If you were to sell your house today and you take what you owe, you subtract that, that's your equity. That's how much you own of that house. So in this case, because it's brand, like you're just buying it, you have... $25,000 worth of equity there. This column is not always going to be there. The equity column. That one, it's kind of like optional there, but I'm going to include it anyways. Okay. And now, for interest, we're going to use this formula. The lowercase i, which is the mortgage, times rate divided by 100 and you divide all of that by 12. This is MTG, so mortgage times rate divided by 100 and you take all that divided by 12. That's a little small there. I'm going to zoom into this table a little bit. 
There we go, that's much better. Okay. And the principal, the principal portion will simply be your payment minus lowercase i that you just calculated before. And what does PMT stand for? It's basically this column right here. PMT is payment. Okay. So on this table, I will show you all the work. You do not need to show me all the work when you fill out one of these. Okay. It's basically going to be right or wrong. So I take the unpaid balance. So I use this formula, right? The, my mortgage right now is 160000 I multiply it by 0 0.06 because that's what 6 divided by 100 is. And I divide that by 12. It's always divided by 12. Okay, so let's see what it is. Times 0 0.06 divided by 12. It happens to be exactly 800 bucks, which is not very common for the number to be a nice whole number. But there it is. That's how you figure that out. I use that formula up here. To figure out the principal portion of my payment, right? I take the payment and I subtract 800 from it. And that is 1024 minus 800. Mental math, right? Technically. But it's Monday, so I don't want to take a risk there. So 224 is the principal portion. Let's see if you can answer this to me. Who gets the 800 bucks? The bank gets that. And where does this 224 go? Towards the mortgage, towards your loan. Like it's only the 224. So you give them like here, take a thousand dollars bank. They're like, we'll take 800. Thank you very much. 200 goes towards actually paying down your mortgage or your loan. Okay, so you go minus 224 here. You take this, subtract. And so let's take 160,000. So you were paying attention at home. Oh my goodness. I wasn't just talking to myself. I'm telling you guys, it's the weirdest thing being in this room by myself teaching. Right? It just not doesn't seem right. And then plus 224 here, because the equity part, what you own in the house is going up every time you make a payment. It's a little bit oversimplified because at the same time, your house is also increasing in value, but that doesn't happen as quickly. So this is what you owe now, slightly less than what you started, right? So you take that, you carry that with you. Maybe I'll use a red pen or something to make you see it. You don't have to, if you don't have a red pen, I'm just going to go and just show you that that kind of got me started. And then this number is going to get me started on the next line. Okay. So to get the interest on the second month, it's going to be less than 800, correct? A little bit less than 800 because you owe less now, so you're not going to pay as much interest. So this is going to be 159.776 times 0 0.06 divided by 12. So you're essentially doing everything else the same, except for you start with a lesser amount. Okay. 159.776 times 0 0.06 divided by 12. That's 798.88. Sometimes you have to round, sometimes you don't. Okay? 798.88. Slightly less, not much, but less. So it's only two months in, right? Into a 20 five-year mortgage so the changes are very small from month to month then you take the 1024 your payment right that doesn't change 
and you subtract 798.88 from it, and I'm just going to keep my number on the screen. So now it's 225.12. Right. You take this, take the 225.12, and that's going to knock down the unpaid balance or the mortgage. Okay? One fifty nine five five zero eighty eight. That's what you owe now. I almost the equity column is gonna be it's not always gonna be there. So you don't worry about that one too much. So now your equity is twenty five thousand four hundred and forty nine point twelve. I'm just gonna do this here. I'm gonna grab a highlighter. I'm gonna show you that the two twenty four is there and it shows up there and there. Okay? I'm just gonna do that once so that you know you can tell that this affects the unpaid balance and it affects the equity. One more line, one more line, okay? So now I gotta use my red pen again. I'm gonna take this unpaid balance and carry that over to my next month, okay? So now it's gonna be tough to get this in there. So 159.55088 times 0 0.06 divided by 12. So 159.550.88 times 0 0.06 divided by 12. It's here you have to round, right? 797.75. I smell French fries all day. You smell that too? Like the fried, I don't know what it is, restaurants in this area? Or am I just losing it? Anyways, I'm losing it? Okay. Yeah, I'm hungry. Maybe that's what it is. 1024 minus 797.75. That's 226.25. Okay. So notice that your principal is slowly going up. And after like 10 years, after 10 years of making this, you go back in your bank account, you will notice that mo like slowly it will shift towards principal because you owe less and less. So every payment has a greater portion going towards your unpaid balance. Okay, so now if you had a choice to pay off faster, you should do it in the first 5 to 10 years of your mortgage, not the last because you pay most of the interest in the first half of your mortgage. And you're thinking, it's so far ahead of me, I don't, I'm gonna forget that. Well, you're basically, your brain will record this and when you hear it again, you'll be like, oh yeah, I remember, right? plus 226.25. There you go. That's a fully completed table, but we're going to add something here. This technically keeps going, right? All of this would continue to happen month after month. Because some students think it ends here. Right? Some students like, oh yeah, after three months we're done, right? So, no, this is for every month. And if you make bi-weekly payments, this would be even more. Because you're making them every two weeks, right? So 
after three months, write this down. That's why I left the bottom empty there. After three months, total payments made. We would say that it's three times 1,024. Because that was your monthly payment. So I'm going to zoom out now. There we go. Uh, that would be $3,072. So after three months, you paid $3,000. You gave that to the bank. Total interest paid. This is after three months, right? You can't just go, this is what a lot of students think. It's three times 800. It's not. It's 800 plus 798.88 plus 797.75. So it's these three months worth of interest that I'm adding up, that column. And so that is 2,000. 396.63 cents. So sorry, total interest paid. Total towards principal. I'm going to cheat a little bit here. I'm going to take everything I gave the bank minus the interest Instead of adding up these three numbers here in that column, I'm just going to say, hey, I paid them this much. This much went into interest. So 675.37 is towards the principal. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> On page nine. Okay. So after three months, 2,400 almost went to the bank. Only 675 went towards paying off your mortgage. I don't know, like if, if I were you, I'd, I'd find that very frustrating, right? But that's how it is, that's how it works. That's why banks are very eager to give you a mortgage because they make tons of money it's a low risk to them because if you don't make your payments, they just come and get your house, sell it, get their money, and they're good, right? They're back in business, right? And um, so that's just how it works. Okay. We're going to, I want you to practice uh, doing one of these on your own right now. Okay. So. We're going to go to page 10. Oh. Uh, no, not page 10, page 11 for now. I want you to try both of those, except for I'm going to get you to cross off the equity column. I don't want you to worry about that one. Okay, cross off the equity for both of those, both of those questions. Cross off that equity, don't do it. Okay, just do everything else that needs to be filled in there. And uh, one of these, yeah, one of these will probably take you, I can see it taking upwards of 10 minutes for sure for one. So I will first let you just work on one. If you're done, go to question two. And uh, I will go over them in a bit, okay? I'll walk around, see if you're doing okay. okay so there's the first one. And there is the second one. Check to see if you got it right. You know, this last, these numbers here at least, so you know if you wanted to do that on your own, you can do that. And then we're going to quickly go to page 10 and fix that one. 
fill it in, I guess. Okay. This is how you work with a partially filled in table. Just gotta know how you honestly, as long as you add and subtract the right numbers, you're fine. Okay. If you know how this works, you, you should be able to figure it out. Sometimes there's more than one way to get there. Here, they're asking us for principal. We know, right, that the principal is going to be the payment minus lowercase i. Where does lowercase i come from? This is lowercase i right here. And this is my payment column. So you either rem you write down the formulas or you just remember how this works, right? So this would be 1200 minus 920, right? So that'd be 280 bucks. That's what you have to put in there, okay? Then my next month, what am I gonna do there? I don't have either, pay close attention to these ones because they're easy three marks if you know what you're doing, okay? You can't do anything here based on your payment because you don't have the interest nor do you have the principal. Some of you might be tempted to calculate it the way we always calculate, but you don't know what the interest rate is. You can't do that. But there's something that we can do with these two numbers to get you the principal. Because remember, the principal brings down your unpaid balance. Okay? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to subtract them, right? And what do I get there? You take... 191, 438, 66, minus the previous one, and that's 281.34, okay? And that's the one I'm going to place in here, okay? 281.34. Sorry, you can't see that, because I zoomed in too much earlier. Sorry, you subtract both unpaid balances between month one and month two. That difference, right, it went down by $281, right? That's what the principal does. So when I find that difference, I find this. How am I going to find this one? How will I find the interest? These two always add up to the payment, right? So in this case, you got to go payment minus 281.34. And let's see what that is. 918.66. Which makes sense. Our interest is slowly going down. Okay. So this is probably one of the trickier, trickier lines, especially if you need to figure it out backwards, right? This next one here, principal is given to you, so you do the exact same thing. Right? You subtract the principal from the payment to get you the interest portion of it. And again, if you want full marks, make sure you have dollar signs everywhere. So this is 915. 0.96. So how do I make one of these? I basically set up a scenario, I fill in the whole thing, and then I just remove some of the missing pieces, and you have to figure it out working backwards. Right? And then to get this one, we just go minus 284.04, right, 191.438.66 minus 284.04, sorry. That is that is your final unpaid balance here. Okay. Now, let's see if you understand the questions that are following here. What was the original mortgage amount? How much did you owe at the very beginning? How would you figure that out? You almost have to imagine there was a number up here 
right? So I went this number minus 280 to get me this. Does that make sense? There was a number, I subtracted 280, and then I had this unpaid balance. So it is 191, 720 plus 280 bucks. So it's $192,000 was the original amount. Okay. What was the interest rate for this mortgage? I think I'm going to leave that one. I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to go there. Could you determine the total interest paid? And the answer is you could. And this is a review from the first section we did. Total, don't pack yet, just write this down. Total interest is payment times 12. In this case, well, they don't tell us how many years. Scratch, we can't do it. Scratch that and scratch that, my bad. I didn't tell you how many years, so then you can't really do it, right? Oops. Uh, one more thing before we go. We need to fix something in our insurance category. If you were paying attention, you know, you're going to know what I'm talking about. So just go with me. It's just one change that we need to make. Go to page 14. Example three. When, if you go back to the example, this is based on a comprehensive insurance policy, right? So we have to scratch standard and just make that into a comprehensive. Okay. If you make that change, it will all work out, no problems, okay? Um, this is what I'm going to give you. This is the homework for tomorrow, okay? Be ready to write an AC on payments, on insurance, and on this stuff, okay? So payments, insurance, and this stuff. So basically everything we've done so far, be ready for that, okay? And I will do that every day 